Hello. Hi, I'm Patricia McNeely. I am an Illumined Blu-ray Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. Thanks so much for watching my videos. And there's quite a few things I want to talk to you about. And as you know, there's always stuff going on. And, you know, I want to give you some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. I want to take away some of your uncertainty. For a lot of you, you do have personal empowerment. And some of you are actually giving away your power. So that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, some of you, you know, getting steered back to knowing what you know. Trusting yourself. Trusting yourself despite everything that's outside of you. Trusting your heart. And allowing yourself to be steered through your heart. And this is very important. So this, this time period in particular that I want to talk to you about, from now until the July new moon, all of these time periods, these little segments are critical. And if I can put it this way, at the last stop, uh, the last portal the solstice coming out of that retrograde it's not just the universe there is a decision that is being asked of you at every level right down to your elemental beingness right down to the essence of your being and that is are you all in are you in it to win it okay because this is, this is not a game. This is not a dress rehearsal, if some of you have figured out. This is ongoing, and the pro it is a process. It is a process of divesting yourself of everything, everything that really hasn't worked for you, is mediocre, is settling, is painful, is abusive. And we're going to get into a lot of the heavier stuff as we go into the December solstice time. Those of you who have done your work, I applaud you because this is a lonely ride. And a lot of you are standing at the top of a mountain and you're saying, hello, 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 where is everyone? And you're hearing your own echo. Hello, hello. You're not intended to be alone or lonely. But some of you are out in the front and some of you are finding out bit by bit, who you are, what you are, what you have, what gifts you have, what levels you have, where you're connected to. Some of you are just becoming aware that all of the physical sensations, visions, senses, uh, knowingnesses, that what it amounts to is that you're connected to another person out there somewhere. You do have a twin flame that you're this. Okay, now I, I want to talk to you because particularly this period leading up to the July new moon, we just passed through the full moon period, and you're in what I call the backwash. You're in everyone's wishes, dreams, and their mental fog, the pollution that clutters up the landscape. It messes with your twin flames antenna or your radar or your personal radar. So from now, from the 16th until the 31st, which is a full moon, this is going to be a time of doubt, uncertainty, a lot of miscommunication, or communications that are actually mouth versus heart, where things are spilling out. And they're spilling, and I've said this before, and it's being vomited right out in front of you. And there it is, it's on the street, or it's in your living room, and who's going to clean it up? <sighs> We're cleaning it up. It is getting cleaned up, okay? That is what we call uh, transmutation. A lot of you know that you have been releasing, transmuting, small bits and pieces, large bits and pieces. There will be things that are misleading. There will be signals. There will be uh, people along your path. There will be people that, you know, a lot of people talk about implants. But what's an implant? What has it been? 
it's been something that's not just planted in you or embedded in you. It's been maybe a thought someone puts with you. Not everything is dire. You know, not everything, you know, it, it, all it needs to be is a little seed of doubt. If you feed it, it will continue to grow. And you have to be the one to squash it. You're going to pull those little weeds out of your garden and you're going to continue to do so. And you should. Also, misappropriation. This is going to be people still trying to get to you, use you, pick fights with you, try to get their hooks back in. And it's, it's going to be glaringly obvious now. You're going to be able to look at them and say, oh, there they go again. They're, they're doing that same old thing. Don't they get it? I have to get out of here. Don't they get it? Or they may say things about your twin flame. They may say, they may throw all kinds of psychological lingo at you. You know, a lot of us know the lingo now because of television or films or the media in some way. That doesn't make you a bunch of junior armchair psychologists. When it's your love, your heart is going to tell you the truth. And you don't have to like certain habits or behavior. You're not supposed to. You're not here to be someone's doormat, and you're not crazy. There, I said it again. You're not crazy, okay? This is also going to, um, so you're going to be addressing doubts. Is it or isn't it your twin flame? And you always have to go to the inside of you, okay? Is it or isn't it? How does it look? You're going to be looking at what is the appearance versus what is your heart knowing this? Okay, this one gets very, very, very odd. It's slippery, it's subtle, and yet it's hugely significant. This is going to be those things where what are you seeing, what are you hearing, what are you, you know, are you going with the outward appearances? Because many people have a twin flame who is worthy of an Academy Award for acting and it'll show up. Because, but when you dig into the heart, you'll find out what the dissatisfactions or the vulnerabilities or the fears are. When it gets right down to it, it's fear that usually is um, what the original impulse is that leads to bad behavior. Now, there's a reason that things are going like this. And I want to encourage you, continue with your body preparation. This is critical. For those of you who wish to be in what you call full union, even if you're together and you're living together or you're married together, you're cohabiting, if you're in the same city, if you live next door to each other, if you're in different countries, different continents, it's no different. Get your body prepared. Pay attention here. Because getting your body prepared is going to make this much easier for you. And what is the easiness? It's going to be a lot of the things that you want. It's going to be your continued togetherness. It's going to be your ability to heal, digest. It's going to also be your ability to elevate, stay elevated, and go back to your origins. Go back to the brand new levels that you yourselves helped create. And this is something that a lot of people really haven't understood. They're looking at this as a 3D relationship and you're finding out little by little that nothing about a 3D relationship applies. And the reason is, is we've dispensed with those 3D karmic templates. We are not living in karma anymore. We are not living in duality. If you're doing the same things and expecting different results, that's not going to happen. It requires you to make some changes. It can be lifestyle changes. It can, make, it can mean um, changes in your routines. It will sometimes mean changes in medications or supplements. 
And some of this is going to seem very scary, very scary because a lot of you are right out in the front and you're going against, you're not really blowing against the wind. You're like that lead bird that's out there in the front and everyone else is in your V shape, okay? You're the one that's out at the front of the pack. A lot of you are here to lead and not follow, and that's important. So some of you, some of you are hitting your own glass ceiling. You know, there you are, and you can't see it. You can't see it. Why? Because sometimes you're doing the same old things. You're doing, you're laying down, you're doing the same meditation, you're putting on the same disc, you've got the same things in your house. And I get it, I did the same thing. I, I found a comfort in some of it. Woohoo! It was new until I started feeling, and I was like, hey, wait a minute. And I heard one of my guides say, how's that working for you? And I was like, it's not working for me. Go away. And they said, is this what you want to be doing? I said, no, I want to get out of here. I want to be the first one out the gate. That's what I want. And they said, it's a process. And I said, go ahead, body slam me. Because when I first started and I first knew what this was, I told them I'd go on a hunger strike. I tried everything to get out of it. It didn't work. What does work is uh, persistence, changing it up, being new, being innovative, finding new ways, trying something. And I'm here to let you know that little by little, a lot of the things that you may have done are going to go by the wayside into more natural things, into real spontaneous fun and adventure. And I once saw uh, I once went on, I'm going to tell you a little story here. I once went on a road trip, and we were driving from Chicago to Florida, which is, we made it into a two-and-a-half-day drive. I know people that had done it. It's a 20-hour drive. We didn't want to do that. But on our way um, going, a log truck had uh, lost its, uh, its load, and these huge, giant logs used for telephone poles were splayed all over the roadway. And this was in the Tennessee mountains, about halfway there. And we knew we'd be stopping, but we wanted to get a little further on down the line. And I was with my ex-husband. And yes, my ex has been my ex for, oh gosh, it's over, it's over 11 years now. But at that time we did this road trip, I knew nothing about Twin Flames. So there we are. And we're seeing people, and their cars are stalled out. They've run out of gas. Their cars are overheated. And we get up to a point, and the traffic is getting off at this one exit. Well, we decide, we didn't know the area. We didn't know the area because in, in that area of the country, it, there's mountains, not really huge mountains like the Alps or the Rockies, but it's still mountainous. So the road goes one way on one side of the mountain, it goes the other way on the other side. So you can't go turn around and get off. You have to go. So we went with the traffic. We got off at the exit. And I myself, I was afraid. And I said, you know what, let's, let's just like spend the night in this town. And it was it was dusk, it was dark, it was unfamiliar. I didn't really we didn't really have a map. We saw a lot of people going into town and we wound up at one of the <laughs> one of the worst hotels I have ever stayed at, one of the worst motel hotels. I will never stay there again. I don't think anyone could pay me enough to stay in this place. But as it was, it just felt like, well, this is a safe place. Okay, and so we actually didn't even ask. We saw some other trucks going, but we go to this hotel, and I didn't want to touch anything. The walls were paper thin, and when I turned on the faucet to the uh, bathroom shower, a really rusty water came out, and it looked like it had been flooded. So I was like, oh, there could be black mold, everything. Anyways, I slept fully clothed, changed my clothes in the morning, and we went, and when we went to check out, I said, you know, 
Uh, there's some plumbing issues. I don't want to complain. We didn't want to complain because we had no choice to stay. It was sleep in the car, go there. And they gave us a, a discount, and you know we wound up paying a nominal fee. But what happened when I we, we asked for directions, we said, how do we get back onto the interstate? And they said, oh, you go up about two miles, and you'll find the exit. And that accident that happened, it got cleared out, and you can get right back on. And I said, we looked at each other, and I said, do you mean we could have just gotten off and gotten right back on two miles and everything would have been fine we could have kept on going and you know that was what fear did to me I had not a good night okay it wasn't the worst night ever it's comical now but it was just one of these things that a lot of this twin flame uh, stuff right now is reminding me of it because I want to encourage you that if you think you're getting off at the exit it's not really it's not really going to be what you think it is keep on going because you might be taking a little bit of a circuitous route here but get back on the highway this is not something to go ahead and you know just jump off that person that you may think is rude to you or whatever you may think think is releasing all of their connections to the 3D collective mental emotional body as well as a damaged psyche and the ego and there are parts brand new body parts replacing it which is why I say do the body preparation if you don't know what to do uh, my recent webinar talks about it and gives you some actual exercises to do to make this easy it will help open your channel so that the release of a lot of this amount emotional residue that is very hugely significant and what are we talking about here what is the significance of this it is relationships okay it's real it's relationships it is from inside your union you and your twin flame how do you relate to money it's going to be money family children uh, some of you what you call career and if you're if you're like this young lady who is you know there and thinking they're seeing things but when they are trying to get their guidance they're beating their head against the wall. Why? Because they may be overthinking. They're waiting for the fog to clear. They're waiting to rise up and over the collective. And it can be expedited and done a lot faster. And what is the thing we're doing here? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. I ain't no size two, but I can reconnect my DNA like I'm supposed to do. So. <laughs> it's an inside job you're reconnecting on the inside the outward changes the outer stuff the behaviors the habits me metabolic issues illnesses diseases that's going to start to go the outside stuff because what you may may or may not know appearance versus heart knowing now let's say you could look at someone you can look at someone and you say mm, wow they're a very good-looking person very good-looking very good-looking you may not know that they're diabetic they have an issue and what caused the diabetes ah it's a false twin situation only to find out that the person that you thought was so beautiful has some karmic issues that are still being released so that they can heal appropriately or maybe you find out that that person has other things other connections other attachments from these other relationships with family okay family children especially what is your relationship to your children are your children where are they in relation to your union rather okay it's your union and 
it's you and your twin and it's everyone else in the outer rings okay and that's how it's supposed to be how do you fit children into your life how do you not allow the children's shadowy influence or a parent it could be a mother it could be a sibling it could be dad uh, we just went through, a, here in the United States, a lot of what I would call very masculine heavy uh, holidays. We have um, Easter is always, um, there's also Passover. Uh, people that I know who are Muslim have Ramadan and Eid. And that is going to be ending this month. And you have... Um, you know, there's a lot of things that come up with families during times of either holidays or celebration. Memorial Day. You have, uh, we just had Independence Day. And a lot of uh, the masculine energy has been what has fought, who have uh, made changes, have been creators. In, in the old way, the masculine energy is pretty tired and they're doing a lot of the same things the same way because it's what they've had to do, it's what they've done. And I don't just mean men, I mean the electric masculine energy. What I want to encourage you to do is set a lot of that old stuff aside. Set it all aside. Don't get off and sleep with it at the exit in the crappy motel room. Trust me, you don't want to do that. It's, it's, it's gross, okay? Keep letting it go on out. Get back on the superhighway. Get back and elevate yourself. How do you do that? I have a lot of simple suggestions in my webinar. Simple, maybe not easy because it requires people to be persistent. I mean, I myself, I will tell you this. When we first came out of that retrograde, I felt the depression that everyone else felt until I was like, wait a minute, feeling depressed is not my normal state of being. I, I got to do something. I also wanted to reach for creature comforts. Well, yeah, I could eat an entire sheet cake. I know it was bad for me. Um, with other people, it might be other things. And, or you might just say to yourself, I'm cuddling. I'm just cuddling with someone. I just, I just needed a hug. I just needed a cuddle. But what you're going to find is that even those things are sublimating your true desire for the union. And you, I know, I know what some of you are going to say because you've already said it. But Patricia already told my twin flame, and they don't care. I will say this: you are each other's lifeline. You will always rescue each other you will always bring each other up and out of here and so what I want to let you know because I want to actually say one thing here that needs saying please don't air out your laundry in the comments or in social media or on Facebook you are leaving yourself vulnerable and then some of you are wondering why you're having bad nights or darknesses especially if you're either attacking your twin flame or allowing others to. You are one and the same. You will feel it. It will have a boomerang effect right back to you. It'll slap you right back in the face. That's what, that's what this negativity does. If you don't know what to do, and trust me, we've all been there. We're letting go of our old fight or flight. We, I, I had a few tests with that myself. I had, uh, I had actually taken a couple people to go see fireworks, and we're leaving, and we're trying to walk back to where we parked, and there's people honking at us for crossing the street because they want to go. They want to go. And the difference is they've forgotten that they are a pedestrian, and there they are in their armored vehicle. And what are they going to do? Mow us down? Well, you never know. If someone's drinking, they might. You never know what other people are going through. That's, that's part of this. Whatever someone else is going through, 
it's not your problem, but it could become your problem if you allow it. So some of these releases are so that you can get good at either non-reaction, making appropriate choices, making the right decisions about things. And some of you, I know what you're saying, you know, huh, they come near my kids, I'm going to set them on fire. Well, some of you have actually done that, and that's not being allowed anymore. What happens if you take fifth dimensional beings, because that's what your light body is, and you stuff it into these human bodies? Where do you think that superhuman strength, stamina, that ability to lift a car off a kid, where do you think it comes from? Where do you think these boxers and fighters have been able to, you know, really do some damage? But they themselves also get damaged. And this is one of the things, is that in order to be multidimensional, it means that you are tempered, that you have a, an appropriate expression of your emotions, and you're not connected to the collective. That's, that's what's happening here. So those of you that continue to move forward are going you are going and you're going to elevate and you will become multidimensional because you yourself you came here for this you invested yourself in this you were invited but you also volunteered because when your very willingness is what has pulled you through here you didn't come this far to be dropped and it's important to distinguish that those visions, those dreams, the night work that you're doing, the impressions that you have, the things where your heart tells you things about your own twin flame, like he's not telling you the truth, or she's letting you think that she's doing this, but she's not really. You just have to persist and keep loving her. Do it. Do the things that your heart is prompting you to do. That is where it's going to be at. Okay, those of you that believe are carrying the day, and this is not an empty belief. This is also you getting the opportunity to finally heal some things. And not everyone's a twin flame, okay? Not everyone is even an illumined twin flame, which means that you've opened up the majority, at least 80% of your spiritual DNA and tested it out. You've test drived almost everything that you had in you. Some people are divine counterparts, but I want to let you know that some of what's happening here is so that other people don't drag you down. There is a massive orchestration so that the third, fourth, fifth waves, third at the end of this year, fifth, sixth, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth next year. And a lot of those are going to be your children. You want your children to have the setup. You don't want them to have the same, sorry, you don't want them to have the same junk that you grew up with. You don't want them to have to contend with uh, feeling ostracized or feeling strange or different or ill or sick or labeled or any of that. You don't want them to have to, you know, find that there's, there's no hope for them. Okay, that is not why we are doing this. This is happening this way for a reason, and it is so that a platform is created which is secure, it's safe, it's stable, and it is there so that a lot of you who have karmic relationships, okay, if you have once had karmic relationships with mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, brother, sister, cousins, children, okay, I know someone uh, who... Every holiday saw an uncle, and from the time she was eight years old, she was molested privately in one of the family rooms during holidays. So there was an association there. She actually grew up with the sense that this was normal. This actually happened to every girl from the time of eight years old. I know boys, uh, 
men, actually. Men get their own fair share of abuse. They do. As boys, sometimes as men. There's a lot of articles coming out now about slavery. Slavery in Thailand, Indonesia, um, other parts of the world. Or people working as slave labor. You know, working for, you know, pennies pennies on the dollar. There's a lot of things that are transparent because of interchanges that were made where those walls come tumbling down. This is not being done for one twin flame couple. This is happening in such a manner so that there is safety and security for a majority of people who came here to be new, who came here to be healed and didn't come here for the same old baloney. And that is uh, why a lot of you, I want to say this to you right now. So please take this in the spirit offered. Please focus on your own true love story. It's your true love story of how you came together. It doesn't matter what other people are saying. Because not everyone's able to go to this at the same speed. Not everyone's a twin flame. They might feel a connection with someone. I'm going to make a special point here, too, for those of you who are Blu-ray Twin Flames. And by now, a lot of you know who you are. And yeah, you're also Black Diamond, Blue Diamond. You have a lot of your rays opened up, and you've gotten good at it. You're here for you know some, uh, you're bringing something to the table that is some aspect of something. Many of you are parts of this grand orchestration and your personal union is going to uh, be felt from a higher level so that you can orchestrate and set up things and to please keep going steady. You were born with more than seven chakras open. You were born with a lot of your outer connections already having been established so that this life I'm not saying it's easy, but some things would be easier in that when you come together with your true love and really physically together, it's, it's going to get lighter and lighter and easier. And I'm just going to end with one thing here. There's nothing wrong with courting your twin. Get them a card. Get them something, even if they're not with you. Write them a poem. Express your heart. Get your... I got a challenge for you. Go to a card store and look until you find the one that clicks with you, where you say, yep, that's my twin flame, or makes you cry, but it's a good cry. Um, there's a lot more that's going to continue happening. I will have other videos. I'm also working on uh, some other material that is going to be very helpful for people that are going to be in the very last bits of getting your twin flame uh, integrated with them so that you can physically be together and really start having fun. So thank you so much. Stop doubting. Stop the doubts. Stop the worries. You don't know. If you don't worry, just, you know, don't worry and make wishes instead. I wish this. I wish that. You don't know what to do. Go for a walk. Walking is good because the new earth, the chakra, is under your foot feet. It's, it's, not, um, it's not in your tailbone. It's under your foot. So walk, 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 walk. That will, that will be of huge assistance for you. And I wish everyone a wonderful week. Thank you so much. My webinars, which will be very helpful for you, they are designed that way so that it's very concise. And, and there's, there's stuff in there, five minutes, ten minutes. Do it, do it daily. Get on board here. Break that glass ceiling. You know, break right through. Because that's, that's going to help you. I'm not saying I'm the only one helping here. I know I'm not. But help yourself by... You know, do something. Do something different. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day. Bye.